and we are live what's going on people welcome to another episode of the off the ball podcast with me your host chris lebron and we are brought to you by the off the ball network and i got a special special show today if you've listened to me and the shows i've done in the past how i kind of got this show going was doing a lot of these draft profiles and on today's show i got a special 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 guest with me today you know one of the top international prospects you know he they call him a unicorn right he's you know he's a special special talent and you know i perfected his name which and we did pre we, before the show i told him the name he he said it sounded perfect so <laughs> i'm going to introduce my you know my special guest Renz blindberg what's going on friends what's going on man thanks thanks i can be here bro Yes, yes. Thank you for coming on the show. Um, I, like I said, appreciate you coming on and, and joining me for another, you know, like I said, I did a bunch of these last year and it, people really loved them. So I'm excited for you to be the first guest of my NBA draft profile show this year. So thanks for coming on again, man. No problem. No problem. Yes. So let, let's get into it. Let's, you know, when was that first moment that you fell in love with the game of basketball? Uh, I mean, uh, my, my whole family was a uh, basketball minded. And, um, when I was young, I, I started playing basketball when I was three years old. So I was really, really, really young. And, uh, yeah, because of my family play basketball, they put me in the club where I'm still at. So yeah, just the family thing, I guess. And were were you watching in the NBA or was it just, you know, growing up in Belgium? Did they, how was the basketball there? Uh, basketball in Belgium is not really a popular sport. It's more football, soccer, and basketball. Yeah, like I said, it's not really popular, but it's still decent, decent level. Uh, some clubs are playing uh European good leagues like Euro Cup, and um, like I played in. So it's it's a kind of decent level, and yeah, it, it's nice to play in. For, for for young for young prospects is is good to to get experience. Yeah. So, who were did you watch any NBA basketball growing up? Uh, when I was younger, uh, I was around ten years old. I was watching uh, LA with Kobe and and stuff. That was that was great times, and that was really the time I really fell in love with basketball. So that was really the moment uh, I knew I want I wanted to be a professional basketball player. And you were a Lakers fan growing up? I was a Lakers fan growing up, but after I was a LeBron fan. So okay. I went to the Cavaliers and then oh, so you, you joined you joined Lakers. whatever team LeBron yeah, joined. You know, <laughs> and but I was also a fan of Kobe. So yeah, it was like a, a difficult situation, but I was always a fan of LeBron, so I supported the team that where where LeBron was at. Well what is it about LeBron James that you know, made you, you know, that made you, that was your guy. Like what, what about LeBron made you just be infatuated with him? Uh, I mean, I don't know, just the, his mentality of want want to win. Okay. He didn't want anything he wanted, but just his mentality and how he plays. And it's just nice to watch. Like there are a lot of uh, LeBron fans. So I think it's normal to be a LeBron fan or a Steph Curry fan. I think it's not, it's not really hard. <laughs> Yeah, and you know it's crazy because my name, my last name's LeBron. Yeah, so I, yeah, so I everyone assumes that I'm like a huge LeBron <laughs> fan, but I'm like the opposite because of that. Oh, no. Everyone, I, I'm no, I like LeBron. Don't get me wrong, but he's not like my favorite player of all time and all right. that. Like, but I grew up, you know, I I always appreciated what he did and all that, and you know how great he's been, and he just everywhere he goes, it turns into magic, right? You know. It's he goes to Miami, they win championships, goes back to Cleveland, he wins championship. But it's always funny because I even have a tattooed on my arm, mm -hmm. LeBron, and everyone assumes that oh, you're a big LeBron <laughs> fan. But I'm like, no, I have it lowercase. So if you see here, I don't know if you can see it. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. I have a lowercase b, mine's lowercase b because yeah, I'm Hispanic yeah, yeah. and it's a very oh, popular Hispanic name, mm -hmm. and people don't didn't know that. I didn't even know that. But I have a lowercase b, not a capital b. So that's when I tell people, like, no, I'm not a LeBron James like <laughs> mark like that. Like, like let's relax. I wouldn't even do that. But if I would, if I did, if I was a fan, it would uh -huh. be a capital B. Yeah. 
Yeah. You know? <laughs> he's right, he's right, he's right. <laughs> so that's why it's always funny. I people tell I even I named my son Jordan too. So his name is Jordan LeBron. <laughs> oh, that's nice. Gonna lie. Hey, you thought about that one. Yeah, you know what I think? I didn't really think about it. I no? I put it together. I always liked the name. And it just happened in my last name, LeBron. And I'm like, and I remember after thinking about it, I was like, yeah, he's gonna be wow. great. He's gonna yeah, no, but then I'm like, oh man, a lot of pressure. A lot of, <laughs> a pressure. Lot of pressure. He's gonna right? have to be, <laughs> I mean, by the time he gets older, you know, LeBron's gonna be retired mm-hmm. and all that, but still, yeah. like they're gonna be like, Your name's Jordan LeBron, you can't you didn't drop 30 points today. That's the pressure I put on. But you know, he's gonna have to figure it out, you know, because yeah, there'll be a lot of pressure. But like you said, you said you like LeBron James, you like Kobe Bryant. Who what other players did you like growing up? Um lately I, I really like Stephen Curry too. Um just because he's he's an insane player. <laughs> I like uh KD. I also really like Kevin Garnett when I grow uh, when I grow up. Just the mentality he had. Um yeah, that's a few players I really like growing up. And were you always tall or did you have one of did you have like an Anthony Davis growth spurt overnight where you grew ten inches overnight I mean, like AD did? Yeah, it's difficult to translate because we are in uh, we talk in centimeters. But yeah, yeah. Um, I was always a tall kid, but I always played on the point guard because I had the most like yeah kind of vision of my team. So it maybe make me like a, a good floor leader or whatever. Or general, yeah. But um, when I was eighteen or st- something, so two years ago, I was around like six, seven, six, eight. So I, I grew a lot a few years. Like like last year's, uh, so yeah, I'm I'm now six ten, close to six eleven. So, yeah, it's all right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was gonna have a growth spurt at, in high school. I thought yeah. I'm the same height. I'm mm-hmm. so upset. They told me I'd be a big man and all that. I thought it was gonna be six four, six five. <laughs> Trying to get a little scholarship here. I never, mm-hmm. I never grew. I uh, never grew. So I was so upset. I didn't grow. But uh. Your 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 game is very guard like, right? So, and I know growing up for me, if they see a guy who's six foot ten, they're gonna be like, "All right, you're gonna be a post, you're gonna be a post player, you're gonna back to the yeah. basket and all that." Mm-hmm. But obviously, the game has evolved and it's changed. Where you know guys like you are handling the ball and you can handle the ball like a guard. Was mm-hmm. that always the case when when growing up? Did they always say, "All right, we're gonna teach you how to be a ball handler, be a point guard, be a point forward"? You know, sort of like, um, or, was, or did they try to, did they try to, because you're tall, try to make you like that modern day big where, you know, they're going to try to yeah. back you up? Yeah, like I said, normally in Belgium, I don't know if it's in the States too, if you, you're tall, you play on the five, you're small, yeah. you play the point guard. And it was real, it was kind of different in our team. So because I played, I played on the point guard, I had to you know, work hard on my ball handling and, so when I grew up, I just always went before practice. I have all hour and just do my ball handling. And they thought I was about to uh, to become six 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 seven. So I was about to play the two spot. But when I grew up and I, I was like six ten at a, at a moment, they never expected me to play two three. Still two three. So I think it was really smart to put me on the point guard to. Because now I'm I'm a kind of special type, and if, maybe if I was a four, I was not even that special anymore. So it was maybe good in my youth. I uh, played on the point guard. Yeah, and I think you know as we see the the game evolve, I think like you said, guys are are, are going to have to learn how to play. You know, be a ball handler, be able to facilitate. Right, the days of just hey, a point guard's going to be a point guard. Yeah. Shooting guard is going to be a shooting guard. Small forward is going to play. A pile forward is just going to be a brute. And a center is just going to be back to the basket. You know, how I would grow up, those days are kind of, you oh. know, going away. Where yeah. if you're a, if you're a forward or a center, you got to have a little bit of a handle, oh. right? You got to be able to do stuff. So, And it's crazy how the game has evolved to that point where mm-hmm. you got to learn everything. It's not just one thing. Hey, you're a point guard. You're just going to facilitate. Mm-hmm. You're not going to worry about scoring. It's no. You gotta, everyone's got to learn everything about the game. It is. It is. Yes, yeah, it's really important to get more like than one thing in your pocket. You gotta ha- you gotta have a whole bag, and uh, yeah, the more you can, the more special you are, and that's that's maybe a thing I have an advantage. 
Yeah, and I think, you know, a lot of people, especially my, people my age, because I'm 32, and I know a lot of people get stuck on the, you know, the 90s basketball or 2000s basketball, that style. And that's because, you know, a lot of people, you, you it's in your era, right? Mm -hmm. you, you, that, whatever era you lived in, you're always going to be fond of that. But I've always said the basketball we see now, like the talent level, yeah. you know, not just in the pros and the NBA level, but like, you know, overseas and just the kids coming up in high school these kids are more we have the most talent in basketball we've ever seen ever globally like it's crazy how skilled a lot of you know, guys like you and so many other guys are just multifaceted like what you can do on the court is just it's it's just unreal what you guys can do it's special it's a lot so much great talent in basketball all, all over the world yeah i think so uh if i see when i played euro cup and I see a lot of young guys with really, really good basketball IQ and and stuff they all can do. It's it's crazy. It's amazing. Yeah, it, it really is. And and I enjoy watching all facets of basketball. And it, it's really fun seeing how much the game has evolved and how much talent yeah. <laughs> talent these you know guys like you and and everyone else are it really is. So talk to me. What what was that realization that you felt like growing up that that you can actually play professional basketball? Um, when I was 15, 16 years old, um, we had European championships in Belgium, uh, in, in Europe, and it was like under 16, under 18, under 20. And I really proved myself because I was playing the two spot in the point guard and I was really tall. And that's where, uh, the most vision was on me, where they really watched me and where I put myself a little bit on the map, not enough because... I was always flying under the radar and yeah, I think at that point I really wanted to become a professional basketball player and that was the moment I, I really uh, knew it was possible. Okay, so obviously in, in the States, right, we have, you play high school basketball, you could play AAU basketball, then if you want to go play college, you could play, you can go, you know, go to college and then go pro or you can go overseas and then go pro after how is the the landscape of basketball as far as that how is the setup as far as you know is there um, do, you, do you just go because i know obviously you can probably go pro at 16 and all that so how how is yeah. that you know as far as school do you have to go to school and then you know go to to the university or something how how is the the system yeah. there I, I will i will explain my my um my way my upcoming way uh, when i was 16 they asked me to come become a professional basketball player in antwerp it was in the same club but i said no yet because i really wanted to play in college but and you, and you uh, got scholarship offers right yeah I had great scholarship offers and i i'm really uh, i don't know how to say that uh i feel a little bit bad i, I couldn't do it but oh, yeah, so you, you it, regret? Do you regret not going to college here? Yeah, for sure, for sure. But, but I was not the best student, and uh, uh, <laughs> that's always the part. That's the toughest yeah, part. <laughs> but because of uh, I, I didn't my, finish my school because my last two years I had to finish it. But I became pro on my on my seventeen. I really had to make the choice or going pro at seventeen or have two more years of school and go into the states for my college. And uh, yeah, at that point, I really um, made the choice to go professional, uh, put everything on basketball because it was really important for me. And because I was a bad student, it, it was an easy choice for me. But yeah, I really, like you said, I really regret it because I had like, I couldn't, I could go to Kentucky, Texas Tech, uh, UCLA. I had great offers. So it wasn't, yeah, I, I really regret it. Did they prep you at all, like in Belgium, like the school system, like prep you for the possibility of you going abroad and going to the States and going to college? Did they try to prep you at all to, to if that was a choice you were going to make, would they have prepped you or did they uh, prep they, you at they all? Did, nah, they didn't like it to go to the States, to, to the school. So they, they were really trying to hold me in Belgium, uh, gotcha. finish, finish my school here and really to stay here. So it wasn't really not easy. And that was... Yeah, the more easier choice was just to sign pro and put everything on basketball. Yeah, I mean, what, what, um, how, what, how many schools were interested? In you? I'm sure, like, they see you're six foot ten and you could do everything. You know, I'm sure you had all the offers. Did I you had, understand yeah, the process, like said, though? 
Do you understand the whole college process though? That you know, nah, going to a big really, universities really, and all that. Because when I received the offers, I was about to um, go and visit the schools, but I don't know the rule. You can't visit like five or three or whatever. Yeah. So I was about to leave to uh, Texas Tech. The, um, yeah, I don't know. The Red Raider, yeah. I'm really, I'm really not into all the schools and stuff. But uh, yeah, I really wanted to go there. But yeah, they hold me to to play with the first team here. So yeah, I'm. Uh, yeah, it's it's a big regret for myself. I didn't go to there because I had yeah great schools, great offers. It was good for me to. So, yeah, I think it. I think it was maybe good, but now I got a lot of experience because I played pro of for course. like three years. I played in uh, European top league, so I think it was a good choice. But yeah, a little bit of regret. And you had some major offers too. You weren't just going yeah. to whatever to some random, you know, lower level school. You were going to the elite of the elite. I mean, you just mentioned what Texas Tech, Kentucky, <laughs> UCLA. I mean, those are. Some big time blue blood programs there. Yeah, I, I think so too because I was talking. Yeah, I had an agent then. I don't, I don't know if you can have an agent in, in college or not. I don't know. Unless you but declare, then, that's the only time you can have an agent if you declare for the draft. Oh, okay, yeah, but um, yeah, he really wanted me to go college too because maybe it was good to get to get stronger to get yeah. in a good program. Wait, wait, and wait. really with that schools, they were really interested. Um, and yeah, yeah, it's uh. It, it it wasn't it wasn't that good that my I was a bad student. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've been there, man. The, you, yeah. you know, even living here, you know, I, I didn't have the best of grades and all that. But it's tough. I mean, school, the school, it's tough because, and especially, I'm sure yeah. for you coming from you know Belgium and then coming to the states, it could be you might have that culture shock where like it's yeah, everything's sure. moving fast pace, you know, and yeah, everyone's gonna expect you to be. You like the savior, you know, if you go to Texas Tech, you're going to be a savior, UCLA, savior, Kentucky. They expect you to be, you know, a superstar from day one because they got all these great players. So, I mean, that yeah. would have been, you know, a tough adjustment, too. Yeah, because I hear it a lot when because in Belgium, you can have six players abroad. And um, if I talk to them, yeah, they went to, OK, maybe not the best uh, colleges, but they really say it's a hard program. You got to go to school. Go quick to practice, eat, uh, wake up early and stuff. So <laughs> I don't know how, how it is, but yeah, I don't know. I really don't it's, know. It's tough. I mean, I've talked to so many guys who who said, I mean, the, to, to balance school and then be uh, a, a basketball player on the team and then, you know, have the pressure of having to, you know, win games, right? Because, you know, yeah, that's sure. what you're there. They, they brought you there to win games and – there, there could be a lot of circumstances of coaches. I mean, I had a guy on um, and he talked about he got there on campus. They fire the coach. So mm -hmm. now you go there for the coach that you because you pick the school because you the coaches and the system yeah. and all that. He gets mm -hmm. fired. And then now it's like, OK, I made this huge, huge decision to go mm -hmm. play at this school, you know, move all the way to wherever. And now now they have to bring in a whole new coach, yeah. you know, bring in a whole new system. And that coach may not fit what you your playing style. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's an, that's another big thing. So it, it's college picking a college is, is very, very important. It, it, it's a yeah, crucial I think, point, I think so. I think so. It, but I think you did. I think you did well. I, th I think you, I think you've done well. Yeah. You know? I, I've done, uh, I've done great things. Um, a few, uh, like a few years already because I really put a lot of time in it and I really wanted to be become better. And I really wanted to, to play at the highest level. And that's why I put it so many time in it. And yeah, I think I made yeah. the right choice. I, I think you're doing good. So you spent the last three years with, with Telenet, right? Yeah, Telenet, Andrew James. Yeah. yeah, so talk about that when you first arrived there and what was the biggest adjustment you had to make? I mean, it was not really difficult for me because I played with the same club from my three years old. So I'm already 17 years in the club. So it, oh, it was, so that's how it's it's built, where they, yeah, they have I a whole from farm youth, system from when you yeah, are out of the youth. womb. <laughs> yeah, great. for sure. I went from <laughs> you to the second team, proved myself in the second team, practiced with the first team, played some minutes with the first team, and now, yeah, being a key player in the first team of uh, the club where you always have been playing, it, it's, it's nice to be. 
it's nice to be yeah, a key player in the team. Yeah, that's awesome. So, like, the first year, you, you know, you play some minutes, second year some minutes. Then you have the big jump in minutes where you're playing more. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. what, what do you think that you – what did you think the jump was for you as a player from that second – the first two years to the year three? Uh, I mean, the summer after year two, I worked really hard with the coach and I talked a lot with him and he wanted to – he want me he wanted me to become a floor leader and leader of the team and it was really um uh yeah it, it it really changed my mindset and i needed to be there so i had to be ready for it so i worked a lot i worked with him and he really had the confidence in me to to put the ball in my hands to lead the team and i think i showed him i can i really can do it so yeah it was a really progress it was really a progress did you did you emu- try to emulate your game after so after a, a player or a, a, that you know in a, an NBA player or a person overseas? But did you try to emulate your style after anyone in particular? No, not really, not really. I really I really wanted want to be a, a special player. I don't want to to be someone else. I want to yeah prove uh, prove I can I can do something special, and that's our, what I really want to do. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's. So just talk to me about the style, you know, the style of basketball in playing oh. in Belgium and all that. How how, how is the style and how do you, would you compare it to, you know, maybe, you know, college basketball or maybe the, the NBA style? Um, oh, it's, it's difficult because in in college you play against your same age. It's all players we have around to, what is it? 18 until 21, 22 around that. I don't know. Yeah, around that usually. Um and in Belgium, okay, it's not maybe not the highest league in in Europe, but it's still it's still a decent level. Maybe some people underestimate the league, but um, it's really a decent league. You have okay, you have two, three top clubs, you have two, three bottom teams, and then you have like all decent teams. But yeah, then because I play in one of the top clubs in 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 Belgium, we play also in a good Europe European league. This year was a Europe Euro, Euro Cup. The year before it was Champions League. So um, I really had a lot of experience playing in those leagues. So I think, like I said, it's, it's going to be a really a, a advantage for me to to prove myself when I'm coming over to the States in July or in June that I really can, um, that I can show I have a lot of experience and, and uh, yeah, that I really need to show that. Yeah. You also you were the you were under twenty and under eighteen. Uh, you led the team to the, to a bronze, right? And then you yeah. also made the all tourney team. How was that experience of of uh, you know helping a team win medal? Uh, yeah, it was great because Belgium was always a small country. Finished always around the tenth place, and uh, the first year of uh, under eighteen, we had the bronze medal, and it was really. Um, yeah, it was really good for Belgium because everyone was saying, oh, we're playing that country, easy win. And it was really good for us to show that we, where we are, where we made of. And um, yeah, it was really important for me also to be in the All-Star 5 of the tournament because I really wanted to show myself for the team and wanted to, to be a key player in the team and to get the team going. And the year after with Under-20, I did the same thing. It was with a, a older generation, but I did the same thing, lead the team, and and we had success. So that was the most important thing for me to uh, to have success with the team, and especially with Belgium. Yeah, and that that's awesome that you were able to do all this these things, you know, at such a young age and show your leadership, right? And you talked mm-hmm. about leadership before. What when did you start feeling? When did you start hearing your name? You know, possibly being you know in that nba draft or that you could be a possibly get drafted in the upcoming draft when did you start hearing your name i i really I sometimes i'm on twitter and people sending me messages and I, sometimes i i, I try <laughs> to i try to get involved with the people that are putting time in it and i think it's a little bit important to to get some some something going because they are all working really hard putting hours in making stuff and I think sometimes it's it's also fun for them guys that sometimes someone is reacting who's really doing the draft process and talking yeah. because I, I, sometimes I react on on people they ask me stuff and I think it's really 
I'm really that kind of person that I want to get involved, but not too much. But of course, I think it's important. Yeah. Also, yeah. Go go go. Nah, it's all also with Antwerp. Um, it's also important to me to to put the being with the youth, showing myself there that I follow them up because yeah, it's the next generation and and it's yeah, it's kind of important. Yeah, and like I said, I I remember you did you did a show with uh, Rafael Barlow who does NBA Draft Junkies, and that's when I first have heard about you. And I, I mentioned this before before the show, and and I started watching more of your stuff and just seeing like wow, like you you you're a really impressive player. You do so many good things, like we mentioned, like you know your ball handling and all that. And that's when I started to because I like I said I do a lot of draft stuff too, and and I always love to see who who's overseas. And, mm-hmm. and you, we've heard, we hear a lot of guys overseas and, and, but I didn't hear about you too. And then I started to hear your name started getting more of a buzz this year. And to mm-hmm. me, that's great that to hear your name get some more buzz. Cause, and, and I've seen you, you know, as high as people saying you're going to be first round pick, you know? And so I know for you, you probably don't want to fall into it cause you're focused, you're all in your training to, you know, to, 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 uh, to live out your dream. So about that dream, like, have you processed it that like about hearing your name and, and, you know, I know it's still coronavirus, but like maybe shaking the commissioner's hand, giving them the dab. Have you put, have you had that vision yet? Uh, Not really because we're still in a really busy uh, season, but yeah, it's always in your mind, you know, you you try to place it and it's always fun to see your name there, but it was like the few years, it was really hard working for it. So I hope it will pay off. You never know. We will see. But if there is interest, you're always happy that you work for that. And if there is interest, yeah, like it's, 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 like, it's nice that it pays off. Yeah, for sure. So what, what, is, your, what is your schedule like now? What, you waking up and what is your training schedule like? I mean, yeah, now we're close to playoffs, so we we practice a, a little bit less. But for myself, I, I always try to, to practice two times a day, uh, get my shooting, get dri- uh, like my ball handling. Um, then we got to practice. Like, I just wake up, we got team practice, then I go home, uh, I eat, I go back to the gym. So I, I will be around five, six hours in the gym a day. So I think... That's a, that's kind of a lot for people in Europe because it's not the same as maybe in uh, college. Yeah, yeah. Because I know in college you you would have been limited. You probably be upset right now because you only oh. could practice so much time in college. Though you probably be like, nah, I need to work out more. You know. <laughs> <laughs> so, but um, like I, like I said, I I root for you big time and everything you're doing. You you've uh, your your story. I mean, the way you've progressed and gotten better each year. And like you said, I've heard your name, you know, get more buzz and buzz as the day mm-hmm. goes by. Like you're you've definitely blown up. But um, what do you what do you like to do in your spare time? Like I know you like the hoop, and you're probably gonna tell me you love the hoop. But is there anything you like to do just yeah. to, on your downtime when it isn't hoop? You know? Like, yeah, next to basketball. Um... My family, my family is really important. Um, I got a girlfriend. I got a dog for myself. <laughs> what kind uh, of dog? Uh, it's a Pomsky. It's a mix of a Husky and a Pomeranian. Oh, okay, uh, okay. So I bought him from. If I go abroad, I, I have a little friend with me, and um, yeah, playing PlayStation, playing Suke. So that's also a thing i really wanted to be want to be in 2k so <laughs> that's why I'm <laughs> everybody wants to be in 2k yeah. right how are you in 2k i'm, I'm what, what team you use how are how good are you and then what team do you use in 2k um mostly i play my park so i got my own oh, player yeah man the my park frustrates me so much because like the centers are seven four and they're doing like yeah, i guess it it's is. just modern day they, they're just doing all you know step it back is, the steph thing i'm like you're seven uh-huh. five. Like, it's it's <laughs> it can get frustrating to my part yeah <laughs> but next to it yeah i'm a lebron fan but i play with the brooklyn Nets because they just <sighs> op yeah they op the- <laughs> so, okay. yeah. i'm i'm a knicks fan man oh you're a knicks, knicks fan, fan. We're yeah, in I New like York. The, I like the franchise. Uh, yeah, it's nice. It's a really because I like. I was really a fan of Carmelo, back like, in yeah. the days. Not still now, but it's not the same anymore as back in the day. 
Yeah, he, he's but, still he's still giving buckets. You know, he's he's not yeah, obviously he's, sure, he's 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 not prime mellow. But at there's times where he shows you that wow, like yeah, you know, sure. he still got it. You know, but yeah, the Knicks is it's a, it's a great franchise. And I can't yeah, is it? it will and be. They're, and they're better this year, right? Finally, right? <laughs> it, they're improving. And then Brooklyn, right? I live in New York City, so. We got the Brooklyn Nets. We got the oh, okay. we got the we got the we got the Nets here. Like the mm-hmm. rivalry is starting to reboot, mm-hmm. where it could actually be a legit rivalry. So you know, yeah. we'll see you then. And then you're a Lakers fan. You got Lakers Clippers. I'm sure that's intense. And you're a LeBron fan too. So that's yeah. even. And I got a we got a, I got a guy at my network, uh, Mo Murphy. He's a huge LeBron fan. So he oh, okay. you you two would he would <laughs> love to talk LeBron for a whole hour. You know, because <laughs> okay. uh, he, he loves LeBron James and all that, but. But that's but that's cool. So, like you said, you you got your dog and all that. So, you know, what what do you want people to to know about you when you when it's time to to come here to the states? And, and what do they, what do you want people to know about you, friends? Um, what are um, I think that I'm a really good team player, and I'm not one of the guy that wants to make points. And like you can see in my game, I I rather have an assist than a point. But uh, yeah, I really just want to be a good teammate. Being in a team, have a good, have a good. Yeah, it's like a family almost. So you gotta have a good uh surround. Um, and then yeah, just having a winning team. I I really like to win. I hate losing. So that's the most important thing I, that I want. Yeah, I really want just to be a good teammate. Good team. I mean, that's 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 the ultimate thing is being a great teammate, right? Yeah. I. I've always said if you're a great team, if everyone, if you're a great team and then you got a bunch of good guys around you and you got camaraderie, right? To me, that goes so far and away. You know, if everyone is by and everyone has to be best friends, but if everyone no, respects sure each not. other and likes each other, that's mm-hmm. just that's big. That's big for chemistry. And I and I talk about this with a lot of teams, like the Knicks, for instance, they may not have the most talent on the team uh, in the league, mm-hmm. but they're every night they they're helping each other up on the floor. They're liking each other. They're, every time someone shooting makes a shot, they're they're celebrating. Even if they're the twelfth guy on the bench, they're all is, that yeah. camaraderie is special. And when we see teams that have more talent and they're they fall they're, apart. they're fall apart and no one's up helping each other up or no one's celebrating when a shot yeah. is made. And to me, that's very important. If you have a lot of guys on that on a roster, yeah. you you can take you can go far with that. And yeah. I'm sure teams would love that to have that's a true. player like you like that that mm-hmm. can help. Be a part of that and build something special. Yeah. So, I, you know, I think that's very important. That's the reason why my, my Knicks are finally doing something you know, this <laughs> it year. Is. Like, it, it's exciting. Okay. It's yeah. exciting. I think basketball, like, it, it's it's at a really like we mentioned before the talent, but just especially in the NBA where we're so used to maybe like two, three teams being mm-hmm. good, and this year. There's a lot of teams that are good. Have you watched a lot of NBA basketball this year? And how much? And have you enjoyed uh, the season? I mean, for me, it's, it's really difficult because of the time. Yeah. Because it's always yeah, playing at 2 o'clock midnight. And I can't watch it because I have practice in the morning. But if, if there is playoffs, I try to watch it live. But also on the TV, they barely uh, sending out NBA games. I got a league pass, but yeah, I tr- I'm just trying to watch the highlights, maybe some quarters in the game of teams I like. But yeah, it's really it's really difficult to watch games live. Oh yeah, because I I just remember the time. The, the, mm-hmm. that, that's yeah, why so when we were discussing the times, I was like, wait, oh my, that's six hours. I'm like, oh yeah, so you definitely don't yeah, have time to watch anyway. Here, yeah, so. yeah, you definitely don't have time to uh uh to watch games. And I won't keep you too much long. Like I said, I appreciate you coming on, friends. Nah, on nothing but net radio channel on Dash Radio, also on the Off the Ball Network. Like I said, friends uh is on the show. So. I wanted to. Uh, I told you I wanted to do some some rapid fire and some trivia. All right, I wanted to get your trivia. So first, what do you want to do first? You want to do some trivia or you want to do some rapid fire? No nah, trivia. Trivia. All right, let, let's do some trivia. I, I got the I got the the questions up here, sure. and so I'll give you five questions. All right, let's see how you do. All right. Let's see. Uh, your... I'm, I'm getting. I'm getting that kind of nervous now. <laughs> oh no, no pressure. No pressure. No pressure. All right? all right. I'll give you five. Let's see how you do. All right, I'll give you first question. Who's the only NBA player to retire with more career block shots than points scored? Newt Bowl, Samar Balar, Sam Bradley, or George Murasan? This is a throwback, so let's see. If, let's see. I really this is don't a... know, but I will go with <laughs> Bowl. 
I really Manu, don't know. Manu really Bo is correct. Is it? I Manu, Bo, there you go. You're one for one, man. You're one for one. All right, let's go. Question number two. Who is the youngest player in NBA history to record a triple double? Magic Johnson, Michael Jordan, Luka Doncic, or LeBron James? Mm. Magic Johnson. Uh, uh, Luka Doncic? Okay. Nah, I don't know. I don't know. I'll give you one more. It's not Magic. So it's Jordan, Luka, or LeBron. I don't know. I really don't know. I, I, like I said, I really uh, – I will take Luka. Luka it is. Uh, Luka yeah. Doncic. I, I really like him. Luca's 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 fun to watch. Luca's yeah, definitely I, fun. To... I talked with him uh, a few months ago. Oh, really? Nice. He's nice. a really good guy. Yeah, he's he's the best friend of an uh, old teammate of me. Yeah, and it, it, it's and it's crazy because when he was coming out, people were so worried about his athleticism, and it was like, and I remember watching him be like, he's a wizard. Like <laughs> what he does with the ball. Like I don't care that he's not, you know, has a forty-four inch vertical. It is he, what he does with the ball and his pace. Yeah. Is 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 remarkable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's fake. He's fake uh, fast. Yeah, he did it against KD against Brooklyn. Yeah, he did that fake. Thing. He he hesitated for a second, and Durant went, and he just blew past yep. Durant. And it's like, no, nah, that can't happen. Durant is seven <laughs> foot and has some speed. Like he can catch. No, he got past him. It yeah. was it was pretty remarkable to mm -hmm. see. You know. So yeah, Luke Luca. Uh, you know, maybe we'll have those matchups with you and Luca in the league. You know, you, you yeah. don't know. All right, let me give you. Uh, let me give you a few more. All right, let me get you a good one. Let's try to get you one more. Uh, okay, I think I got one. Got to get one. To see, Monica, because I know you're younger. Okay, let, let's see if you can get this one. What jersey number did Carmelo Anthony wear during the Denver Nuggets career? Fifteen, Denver. seven, two, or zero? Denver Nuggets. Denver say Nuggets. Again, say, say it again. <laughs> what jersey number did Carmelo Anthony wear during his Denver Nuggets career? 15, 7, 2, or double zero? <laughs> oh my God. Nah, double zero is not it. Seven is not it. Three of the four he did wear in the league. I will say A. You're going to go 15? Yeah. That is correct. He wore 15. He went I, to seven in New I knew York. It, I knew it. And then double zero. Double zero. He's with Portland now. I don't know. I don't know what he wore in, in the other. I think he in Houston. I think he was seven. I'm not sure. I don't know. I think he was 15. But I know 15 was obviously in uh in uh when he was Denver. And Denver Mello was yeah, yeah, Denver Mello. fun. Yeah. <laughs> he was so much fun to watch Denver yeah, Mello. Yeah. I mean the battles he had with LeBron, Kobe, hmm. D Wade. It was nice. He was so I remember when he fought, <laughs> and it's crazy because he fought. I don't know if you remember this, but he had a they had a big brawl at the garden. Oh, big no. brawl at the garden. It was involved oh, Lamel, uh Carmelo Anthony. He got into a big, big brawl. Oh. And it was crazy because then I'm like, oh, I can't stand <laughs> Melo. And then he comes yeah. to the Knicks. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so that was great. All right. Mm -hmm. Let's see if we get this one. Two more. I'll give you two more. Who's the oldest player to score 50 points in a game? Grant Hill, Steve Nash, Jamal Crawford, or Michael Jordan? Mm. I'll go with Michael Jordan. No. Oh, Jamal Crawford. Crawford. Oh, I was about to say that. I ain't gonna lie. Jamal Crawford. Dude, nice. He's Jamal nice. Crawford handles. I mean, he could still play at this. I mean, he was playing in the bubble. You know, so he he still good can get all right. Give you last one. Last one. Uh, last one. Plan, it's me. All right. What NBA player has won the most MVPs? LeBron, Steph, Kareem, MJ. <laughs> Kareem. Kareem has won the most MVPs. Okay. Six. Hey, not bad. He did. He did that solid. Was one. <laughs> <laughs> I give you that. <laughs> That was the easy one. You did bad. You didn't do too bad, man. You didn't do uh, too bad. All right. I'm not gonna lie. I have I have a guy in my team. He knows everything about the NBA, uh -huh. everything, and I'm the guy that knows nothing about it. <laughs> well, well, at least you, hey, you did. Like I said, you didn't do too bad here. All right, now, really now you learned some stuff too. Now you know. You know. You learned some more stuff. Uh, all right. Give you one. Give you some rapid questions, and then we we'll sign off. Like I said, I appreciate you coming on the show, brother. No all problem. right. Quick, quick, rapid ones. All right. First one, would you rather 
dunk on someone or block someone's dunk? Dunk on someone. Dunk on someone. Waffles or pancakes? Waffles. Waffles. All right. And I I I did my research on this one. I know you like your soccer or your football. Let me excuse me. I'm sorry. I don't want to. Um, Ronaldo or Messi? Messi. Messi. You were a Ronaldo fan. I you did say yeah, you I were a Ronaldo, Ronaldo fan. Why did the switch show? I'm a Ronaldo. I love Ronaldo. I don't know. Because I really don't know. I really don't know why I switched. Because I think when he went from Manchester United to I don't know if you follow it. Yeah. But. When he went from Manchester to Real, I was yeah. I was really not, and I oh you weren't it. happy with that move? No, 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 because I was a Manchester United fan. Ah, okay, and gotcha. So I changed to Messi, and I really like Messi. <laughs> yeah, I I'm kind of like you with with uh with Ronaldo. I go wherever Ronaldo goes. So yeah. I was rocker with <laughs> Manchester United, then Real. Madrid. I love Real Madrid too, but then yeah, I went yeah, with yeah. Juventus, Juventus, and you know he's had a go. But those are great. Uh, both great, you know, players and all that going to be the great. But, friends, my man, I appreciate you coming on the show, brother. I appreciate the invite, man. I really this was, yes, like I said, this was a lot of fun. I appreciate your time. I know it's late for you, so appreciate, yeah, no you know, the time you gave me. So, you know, I, one more thing before we sign off, you know, I've been doing this a lot, especially when I have, you know, guys like you on. What are you most grateful for? Oh, man. my my talent. That's what I'm most grateful of. Yeah, yeah. you definitely been blessed with that talent. <laughs> <laughs> you definitely six foot ten who can handle the ball and all that, man. You definitely been blessed, brother. You definitely been blessed, and like I said, many more blessings on your Thank journey. You. you know, you know. I know you said you're you're getting ready for the playoffs. Good luck in the playoffs. Good luck with the draft process. You know, um, hopefully you get to have you on again before you you know the draft and all that, and talk mm -hmm. more. But like I said, many blessings for you, Thank your family, everyone. Be safe. You know, uh, I know COVID's yeah. still rampant and all that. Be safe with everything, and good luck with everything. So Thank before, you. where can any where can any if where can anyone find you on social media? Uh, it's friends with three Zs. I don't know three. if that's correct, but it's friends with three Zs. And why the three? Three Zs. Three Zs. Because friends with one Z was not <laughs> – I couldn't think it. So. Oh, you, it was, <laughs> just wasn't available. Three. All right. I thought there was meaning yeah. towards the three Zs. It just wasn't <laughs> available. <laughs> it's yeah. like with me. I can't just put LeBron. Like, it just yeah. – it just it's taken, you know. <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, but yeah. friends, that's uh, I appreciate you coming on, brother. Like I said, uh, take oh. care and all that. And uh, yeah. everyone, thanks for everyone for listening to the show, for, for watching the show. You know, I appreciate everyone for tuning in. Um, we'll uh, in the show will will uh, also go up on podcasts. You know, so I have the podcast. I'll also be up on YouTube in a few days. But uh, appreciate you coming on, brother. Like I said, many blessings, many blessings. Continue success with everything. And on that note, guys, be safe, be well, take care. Peace out, guys. Right.